This is a picture of an Iraqi prisoner of war. And according to the U.S. Army, Americans did this to him. Torture outrage. Arab TV networks plastering photos all over the airwaves today of U.S. troops apparently abusing Iraqi prisoners. Images are sickening and the outrage they are causing worldwide continues to grow. About six months after I came back to the States, I walked into uh, Best Buy electronic store and uh, I'm looking at TVs and uh, I see my picture and picture of other MPs um, and your naked detainees and this. I was shocked, of course. There was mortification. I'm on the news. Uh, you know, there's life's going to be a little bit different from now on. It was during the investigation that I saw that I saw them. I didn't know that they exist. I'm like, what is that? They're like, do you know anything about this? I'm like, no. Have you seen any? Did you take any of these pictures? I'm like, no. Seven soldiers, all members of the military police, are facing charges of abusing Iraqis at the Abu Ghraib prison. From the very beginning, the military establishment has said this was the work of a few bad soldiers. I shared a, a deep disgust uh, that those prisoners were treated the way they were treated. Those acts uh, ought not to be allowed to define us. The terrible actions of a few don't change that. No soldiers let us down. They simply let us down. Any evidence of a policy or a direct order given to these soldiers to conduct what they what they did? There was sadism on the night shift at Abu Ghraib. Sadism that was certainly not authorized. It was kind of animal house on the night shift. Even suggesting that this was animal house on the night shift was conscious disinformation. Is, is there any chance that these people were self-actuated, that they were, they just came up with this as their own idea? No, there's no chance of that whatsoever. Zero chance. What they're doing are very precisely described techniques that were developed for use on Arab men in the global war on terror, were implemented at Guantanamo, and were then brought to and used in Abu Ghraib. When you actually think about the animal house on the night shift theory, uh, you have a couple of problems. The big problem is that this actually is a practice that's well known to interrogators. It's called the, the, uh, the Vietnam. It was developed in Brazil. It combines stress positions, which is to say standing on, uh, balancing on uh, a box, with electrocution, uh, or in this case the threat of electrocution. Um, and sensory deprivation, the hood. So this practice is quite well known. How exactly are some uneducated prison guards, how exactly did they know to use this technique which was developed by the Brazilian military? I'd like to know what agencies or private contractors were in charge of interrogations, did they have authority over the guards, and what were their instructions to the guards? First, uh, uh, with respect to the... We did not bring it. Oh, my. Yeah, oh, my. Sorry. I, it was all prepared. It was, indeed. I'll walk through the chain of command and... Uh, no, I, 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 let's... Do, you can submit the chain, chain, chain of command, please. Secretary Rumsfeld, in all due respect, you, you've got to answer this question, and it could be satisfied with a phone call. This is a pretty simple, straightforward question. Rainer and the 372nd MP company embarrassed the Army with pictures and the army got him back <laughs> nothing would have happened to anybody if the photographs wouldn't have been out if there were no photographs there would be no Abu Ghraib there would have been no investigation it would have been oh okay whatever everybody go home these photographs from Abu Ghraib have come to define the United States the US which was viewed as certainly one of the principal advocates of human rights and the view of the dignity of human beings in the world suddenly is viewed as a principal expositor of torture. The United States used to be the model, but it is no longer. If we adopt cruel treatment, uh, as some might want us to, to adopt, if we embrace torturers as 
as something that is expedient uh, and necessary in the instance. We sacrifice a long-term uh, interest. We sacrifice our belief in human rights. We sacrifice our, our belief in, in uh, the rule of law and what law should govern and what law should, uh, should prohibit. And we, we blur the distinction between ourselves and, and the terrorists. And I'm convinced it would be counterproductive in the war on terror. At that moment, I was a different person. At that moment, I was not the person that you're sitting here talking to right now. At that moment, I was somebody else. I'm trying to forget this. Um, not to bring back bad memories. Now, yeah, maybe I have some regrets about what went on there. Even though it wasn't necessarily a comfortable thing to do. Oh, that's some sobering stuff. Tragic, tragic, sobering stuff. Those kids, the MPs, thrown into that situation without the proper training, without the proper support. Ambiguous orders to be charitable, ripe for failure. In our next lecture, we're going to look at the consequences of both the mismanagement of the Coalition Provisional Authority and the massive fallout from Abu Ghraib, the insurgency. Moreover, we're going to see that the insurgency is not a single thing. There are many, many disaffected groups in Iraq in 2003, 4, 5, and 6 who would all like to take pot shots at American soldiers. At the end of that lecture, though, there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Because at the beginning of 2007, a new strategy is implemented. Clear, hold, and build. A new strategy It's accompanied by 21,500 additional soldiers in what will become known as the Surge. Next time, civil war, sectarian violence, and the Surge.